What's up everyone, I'm Calamon Toast, and in today's video I've got part 2 of the Battle of Spice since you guys absolutely smashed the like goal in yesterday's video. This time we're in the Sunshine Cup and once again I'll be showcasing the top 20 spiciest battles that were submitted in my opinion. I received nearly 90 submissions in total, watched through the majority of them and had to create 40 individual team graphics for this series in the past couple of days so if you do appreciate all the effort I've gone through please do leave a like, leave a comment letting me know, but with that being said, let's get into the question of the day. What has been your favourite themed cup this season? Let me know in the comment section down below, and with that being said, let's just get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle, we lead Shadow Mamoswine into a Venusaur, a fairly neutral matchup. The opponent's going to swap into Talonflame, so we swap into our Doduo, and I believe this has to be an XL Pokemon, and it might even be level 50. It only gets to about 1200 CP, so not the highest CP, but it does have Quick Attack and Drill Peck. We make it to a second Drill Peck, grabbing both shields from the Talonflame very early on, and it's a CMP tie as well, so that's crazy that we just won CMP up against the Talonflame wasted some of their energy and we make it to the engine power up against the Talonflame before they get to another charge move. We take out the Talonflame, they come in with a Swampert, we're gonna swap, catch the Hydro Cannon on our purified Cacnea, another Pokemon that has to be fully XL and it only gets to around 1300, maybe 1400 if it is fully powered up. But we go for the Seed Bomb, taking them out, they come in with a Venusaur and we are going to be able to make it to the return. How much damage does it do? It takes out the Venusaur and we take that game. Into the next battle, we have got a... Lopany in the lead. The opponent's going to say swap into a Vigoroth. We can live a body slam here, but it's going to do quite a lot of damage and we will be able to make it to the Focus Blast. Is the opponent going to know we're running Focus Blast? They do unfortunately use a shield there. That is not great, but we've seen one Focus Blast. We're actually also running it on the Blaziken here, so we're going to be able to go for a full counter farm down, getting that farm down, and let's see what the opponent wants to come in with next. They are waiting at the Switchcock. They come in with with the Obama Snow, we can just go for the Blaze Kick here. This will easily take them out or grab a shield. And now we swap, we catch a move, and we get a full Incinerate through with our Darmanitan. The opponent comes in with the Obstagoon here, and we get the full Incinerate through once again as they throw on alignment. And we can now go for the Focus Blast, and this will easily be enough damage to one-shot the Obstagoon. And now two Incinerates takes out the Obama Snow, and we take that game. Into the next game, we've got a fur through here in the lead, up against Trevenant, a very nice lead, at least with the fast move damage, although we only have resisted charge moves to throw, so hopefully they do eventually swap out of this matchup, and that's exactly what they do, swapping into Galarian Stunfisk, which is actually really nice, as we do have Surf, we can go for the back-to-back -back Surfs, and this will get the Stunfisk very low, so we are going to see that we're going to stay in this matchup, this is just going to be a Rock Slide, I believe, so we will let it go through, and now I going to swap out of the matchup no we go for another surf i think this might have been a cmp tie as well surf grabs the shield and it is a cmp tie so that's huge we can now let the fur through go down although the opponent does undercharge that so very nice play but it doesn't matter we get the farm down with pig knight and the opponent's going to come in with a knock tower so we swap into our salazzle we're going to shield this up and we should be able to go straight for a Dragon Pulse here, but the opponent's going to swap and catch it onto the Trevenant. So we go for the Dragon Pulse. It nearly takes them out, but it actually allows us to get one extra Incinerate through. And now at this point, I think we do just go for the Poison Fang Spam. Going for the first one, grabbing a shield as well, which is huge, as we make it to a second Poison Fang. This will now do more damage to the Noctowl, but they will be able to farm us down. Now we need to survive at least one Sky Attack here, as they have back-to-back -back charge moves. We do live it and now we get the ember through we can shield the second one up and that ember should be enough damage actually no it wasn't but one more takes out the noctowl and we take that game all right, so going into the next battle, an absolutely awful lead as we see Shadow Nino Queen completely core breaks this entire team. Gonna go for the Seed Bomb and the opponent does at least let that go through. So they've not got an awful lot of health remaining. We're gonna wait at the Switchcock and come in with the Helio Lisk here and we bait out a Shadow Swampert. We don't quite make it to the Grass type charge move here. Gonna let the Hydro Cannon go through. It actually takes us out, but we can come in with the Sidui, get four Razor Leafs off and completely farm down the Shadow Swampert. We're now gonna shield 
shield up against the Nido Queen. Poison Fang will lower our defense permanently, but what have they got in the back? They've got Vigoroth, and if you guys don't know, this is one of the most dominant matchups up against Vigoroth in this cup. We resist everything. The go for Body Sam doesn't do much damage. We can safely let the next charge move go through, but we are actually going to shield it up anyways, and I think here, going to be able to fully Razor Leaf farm them down and take that game. So going into the next battle, we've got a triple Shadow Ground team here, leading with our Shadow Sand Slash. The opponent swaps into Swampert. This is not ideal. We're going to go for a Night Sash here. We're not running Earthquake either, but we grab a shield and we get the boost, which is absolutely huge. We now go for Night Sash number two. That does a lot of damage. The opponent does farm up to quite a lot of energy. We let the Hydro Cannon go through. It takes us out, and we should be able to Mud Slap, farm them down with our Shadow Marowak from this range. Gonna shield up and we do get that farm down. Let's see what the opponent has. They've got a knocked out in the back. Not ideal for us, but we do have Rockside as coverage. Rockside does connect, it does big damage, but these mud saps really aren't gonna do an awful lot. We're gonna let the Shadow Ball go through. The opponent then swaps and catches onto Galarian Stunfisk, but it's going to be a Bone Club, which doesn't do an awful lot of damage, but the opponent will throw their energy straight away, just a rock side, so we let it go through. We can come in with the Dog Trio, get the farm down, just gonna be another rock side here, so we will resist that. We let it go through, and that mud sap damage does take them out. We can now go for a Mud Bomb Bait, and honestly, from this range, I think we just go straight Mud Bomb here, as these Mud Saps are chunking after time, and even if they're at back-to-back -back charge moves here, we've just received the energy for the Mud Bomb, so we go for it straight away, and from this range, Mud Bomb takes out the Noctowl, and we take that game. So going into the next battle, we have got a Wormadam, and I can't even remember which form this is. I think it's the Grass form. It must be the Grass form, as it's only Grass that's allowed. Or it could be the Ground type one as well, I guess. But we are going to swap into a Rhydon here. Not the best matchup, as they are running counter. We get farmed down, and we did at least grab a shield, though. So we're going to come back in with the Wormadam here. Going to let this move go through. They have to go for Body Sam as an Earthquake will be resisted. Hopefully we can get the farm down here. We're going to let the second charge move go through as well. And they are already at... Body Sam number three, so they are spamming this ridiculously quickly. We're actually going to swap. The opponent also swapped, trying to farm us down there, but we are going to be able to shield this Leaf Blade. Hopefully, we can shield once again and then just fully farm down the Tropius. It's going to be very difficult, though. We shield up the second Leaf Blade. Can we get the farm down? Yes, we can. We come out with a ton of energy. They come back in with the Don Fan. We go for the farm down, but we don't get it in time. This is just going to be a Body Sam. It is resisted. We go for the superpower here up against a golem that comes in we now swap out clearing the debuff go for superpower number two and does this take them out yes it does it one shots the golem that was absolutely insane and we take that game into the next game another shadow uh Mamo Swine in the lead here. We are going to stay in this matchup, go for the Avalanche on the CMP tie with a potential energy ball, grabbing a shield from the opponent. We are going to shield this up, probably going to be a bait, and it is the bait, but we swap into Livani here, and we bait out a flying type, which is kind of necessary since we've got Breloom in the back, and both these Pokemon are double weak to the flying typing. Not ideal in a meta where Knocked Out is one of the most common Pokemon, but hey, it is a battle of spice after all. They do get the farm down there, and now we can come in with our Shadow Mamoswine, let the charge move go through, and we should be able to farm them down with these Powder Snows, get to a charge move here, going into the Obama Snow that comes in, but they did bank a charge move, that's not ideal. We're going to shield this up and swap into Breloom. We swap at the same time as the opponent. They swap into Swampert, and that's not a good matchup for them. We go for the Seed Bomb, we grab the final shield from the opponent, and now here, if they are running Sludge Wave, that will take us out, but Earthquake barely doesn't take us out we make it to the last second seed bomb and this will be enough to take out the swampert they will be able to farm us down but we have an avalanche loaded and we can throw it into the abomma snow and this will take out the abomma snow and we take that game 
So into the next battle, we need Cartana into Obstagoon. Not a very good lead. So we swap into Embor here, and the opponent's going to go for a charge move straight away. We can let this move go through. They go for Obstruct, debuffing our defense, and then they come in with Galarian Stunfisk. Now, they definitely cannot tank a move here. So we go for the Blast Burn, and they do end up shielding it. At this point, we're going to let this move go through. Rockside, with the defense drop, does take us out. And now we're going to come in with our Shadow Typhlosion, go for a very aggressive Incinerate farm down from this range. We're going to have to use both our shields if that is the play we're going for, and it looks like it is, but that's fine. We're going to use both shields. We have 100 energy now, so we should be able to go for a charge move straight away, but we overtap there, giving this Obstagoon three extra counters worth of energy, but we grab the shield. We can now go for Blast Burn number two. This will be enough damage from this range to take out the Obstagoon. They've got a Venusaur in the back, and we're looking pretty good but they do make it to the frenzy plant before the third incinerate damage registers and now it's all up to Kartana. we do resist everything though so this should be pretty comfortable but you're going to see that Kartana is so damn glassy that even a resisted sludge bomb nearly one shots us from full health but we do make it to the night stash taking out the venusaur and we take that game so going into the next battle, we've got a Shadow Giraffe Rig leading into a Bomber Snow. A fairly decent matchup. The opponent's going to swap into a Whimsicott, and we've got a Ponyta to respond here, and we can tank this move quite comfortably. They go for a Grass Knot, although if they do make it to a second charge move, we might have to shield here, and they do make it. Fairy Wind spamming charge moves here. They go for Grass Knot number two, grabbing our shield, but we do come out with a ton of energy. They come in with a Shadow Swampert. We go for Stomp. Stomp, not the best move but it does do nearly 50% of their health we can now go for stomp number two grabbing a shield and the opponent will get a massive farm down though so we come in with our watchhog here and I've never seen this in battle I don't think they go for a hydro cannon and we're able to swap back into giraffe rig going for that psychic fangs this will lower their defense the opponent lets the first one go through it's actually a CMP tie we are going to let the weather ball go through as well we do tank that go for psychic fangs number two straight away gonna undercharge it a little bit here the opponent lets it go through and they don't realize that we undercharged it so we do get a little bit of farm there and now we're able to buy farm down the swampert and take that that game. Into the next game, we're running a Flygon in the lead, but we're running double nukes here with Stone Edge and Earth Power. Very unique combination. Typically, you would always run Dragon Claw and then maybe either Earth Power or Stone Edge, but we go for the Stone Edge. We land it, it does big damage. The opponent swaps into double. At the same time, we swap into our Star Raptor. So, gonna let the first move go through. I don't think they even farmed to the Wild Charge there. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe they did. I wasn't paying too close attention, but we're gonna go for the, uh, the Close Combat, sorry. It does take them out and we do make it to a brave bird just for the sake of it i think close combat would still take them out anyways but we grabbed the shield there yeah definitely would have taken them out we're now going to come in with a level 50 purified star ravia here go for a farm down and we don't get a farm down so we swap into the flygon there catching the move perfect play and now we can get the farm down the opponent comes in with a vigor off we've got so much loaded energy here gonna shield up the first charge move body sand would do quite a decent amount we are going to go for the brave bird and this will either grab the final shield or just take them out it does take them out and we're able to wing attack farm them down there and take that game into the next game, we've got a Whimsicott leading into double. It's actually a shiny Whimsicott as well, so very nice shiny. The opponent is going to stay in this matchup here, and they can only go for the Body Slams. Both Payback and Wild Charge would be resisted, but that Body Slam does nearly 50% of our health, so we do have to respect the second Body Slam here. Well, I mean, I guess we don't quite, but we're going to go for a second Grass Knot, and the opponent is going to let the second one go through. And at this point, are we going to let it go down here? We do actually survive that, and now we're going to swap into our Kecleon. The opponent's going to go for another charge move. Body Sam doesn't do as much damage here, but these double kicks are really chunking. They've put us into range where we can't really tank a second Body Sam, but we do get the farm down. Now the opponent's going to come in with a knockdown. We are running Ice Beam. Will the opponent know about the Ice Beam here? We go for it. Ice Beam 
does grab a shield from the opponent, but we make it to Ice Beam number two, and this will do some big damage to the Noctowl. And the opponent, oh, we tried to catch the move there. Unfortunately, they did not throw. It looks like they were going to go for a full farm down here, but the opponent does end up throwing their energy eventually, so that's good. We do waste a lot of their energy there. We come in with Dunsparce. We can at least tank one charge move here. So we're going to tank the Sky Attack, and the opponent is staying in initially. They make it to Sky Attack number two. We kind of have to let this go through. They clearly don't have Vigor off, and they've actually got a Shadow Swampert. So hopefully two drill runs is enough damage to to take up the Swampert. We land the first one, it looks like it will be, especially since they throw on alignment there. They go for the Hydro Cannon, we can go for one rollout here, going for the Drill Run, and this should be enough damage to take up the Shadow Swampert, and we are two away from the uh, Rock Side here, and Rock Side will be enough to take out the Noctowl, and we take that game. So into the next battle, Shiny Stantler into two cannon. Wow, this is very spicy, and I've just realized that these battles are like, these were already two times speed, so now it looks like we've got four times speed battles. So I do apologize about this, but we're already like, I don't know, 15 minutes into the video here, so I'm not going to cut this out. We go for a farm down here. We're now going to go for the x -Scissor, and we are going to be able to make it to another x -Scissor. This Victini is running Confusion, and by the way, this Parasect has just taken out a Flying-type, and now they're going to take out a Fire-type, even though we are quad-weak to both of those things. We get the boost, and now we go for x -Scissor into Ludicolo. That does big damage. We get the farm down, and we take that game. So... I do apologize for that, but yeah, sorry about that. Uh, way too fast for me to properly commentate, but into the next battle, we see a Shadow Giraffe rig, and the opponent did safe swap into a Glide score. We tried to catch the Night Slash. Doesn't really matter, as they're going to throw Night Slash anyways. They get the boost. Of course, they do get the boost. We're now going to have to shield the second move here, but we will make it to a Drill Peck in time before they make it to Night Slash number three. Do they let it go through? They do, and it actually takes out the Glide score. So that's quite a lot of damage there. They come back in with their Star Raptor. They farm us down, which is really bad for us. And now what are we going to do here? Come back in with the Giraffe Rig. They make it to a charge move. We have to shield everything here. Star Raptor, incredibly glassy. They swap into Diggersby. Very nice catch, but we're going to debuff their defense. Stay in with Giraffe Rig. Initially, bank another Psychic Fangs and come in with a Fero. Fero doesn't have the best fast move. I believe it is Peck, but it has some really good charge moves in uh, Drill Peck and Drill Run as well. This Diggersby is spamming these fire punches, but we make it to the Drill Run in time. And from this range, Drill Run will take out the Diggersby. The opponent lets it go down. And can we get to a charge move before they farm us down? No, but we actually simultaneously KO there. And that was very fortunate for us, but we're able to take that game. And into the next game, we see a Ninetales. The opponent safe swaps into Noctowl. We're running Pupitar in the lead, a very spicy Pokemon. We can now go for Ancient Power, and this will do a ton of damage to the Noctowl if they let it go through, and we get a boost. And now we're able to bite, farm down the Noctowl. That's insane. They come in with Galarian Stunfisk. We're going to come in with our Ponyta, and we will be shielding the first charge move. I believe it's just a Rock Slide, but it would do quite a lot of damage. We're now going to go for a Body Slam bait. No, not Body Slam, sorry. This is going to be Stomp. We've already seen Ponyta. I should know the Ponyta move by now come on they're gonna come back in with the nine tails go for a weather ball it is resisted we make it to another stomp in time throwing just before they get to another charge move and stomp does go unshielded doesn't do an awful lot of damage but that's absolutely fine we can let the weather ball go through it does take us out can we get the bite farm down yes we are able to and we're gonna go for the ancient power it's double resisted but we likely grab a shield from the opponent and we do grab the final shield swapping here and catching the rock side onto Explode and can we get the farm down? We're actually running Astonish. Okay, that is very strange, but it will allow us to get to the charge moves a lot faster than Bite does. And now we make it to the Crunch. Crunch takes out the Galarian Stunfisk and we take that game. 
into the next game, we've got a Lampant here, not a Chandelure, but a Lampant, and you will notice it does also have access to Energy Balls, so I wonder if we will be seeing it land in this battle. They come in with Swamper, surely they don't know. We're going to go straight for the Energy Ball here. Do they respect it? They don't. We one-shot them, and they come back in with the Vigoroth here, and we've seen it already. Body Slam doesn't do an awful lot of damage. We should make it to a Charge Move in time before they get the farm down. We're going to go for the Flame Burst at the last second here, and will the opponent let it go down? No, they actually do shield it up, and they do get the farm down. And we've got two normal types with a Shadow Watchhog here. So I hadn't seen one until today, but now I'm seeing two of them, and one of them is Shadow. I don't even know what the fast move is here. I think it might be like low kick or something. I have no clue in a wasty. But we swap into Perugly and we are running Thunder. But it takes a while to get there and they are resisting the Shadow Claws. Which I assume we're running on the Perugly here. Yeah, we are running Shadow Claw. We're going to shield this up and this is not looking too good for us in a wasty. But we do make it to the Aerial Ace in time. Did we bank a move on the Watchhog here? I don't know if we did. We did. We banked a Crunch. And how much damage does it do? Crunch doesn't take out the knocked out they make it to a charge roof how do we win how do we win this they go for the shadow ball no opponent we're a normal type go for sky attack uh, but anyways we're able to take that game it's still a very spicy team so happy to showcase it and into the next battle we see lampant's dad chandelure except it's running hex and overheat instead we go for the overheat that nearly one shots the noctowl we swap into garchomp to catch a move here sky attack does some decent damage but we're gonna be able to fully mud shot farm them down so i really like this play we now have an outrage to throw into this Vigoroth there just before they farm us down and now we can come back in with the Chandelure but the disadvantage of running Hex is that it does absolutely nothing to these normal types so they're going to go for the Bulldoze and they swap into Gliscor. We can now go for an Energy Ball and then swap into our Shadow Star Raptor. We actually get a defense drop here so I think at this point we just let Chandelure go down. They go for a Night Sash, no boost fortunately for us. And here they're going to go for another charge move. We will shield this up and this Night Slash will now get the boost. Of course they do. But we can go for the close combat. And even though it's resisted from this range, close combat takes out the guy score. Can we make it to the close combat just before we get farmed down? Yes, we can. We go for it and it does easily one shot the vigor off and we take that game. So into the next battle, we have got a Roselia here into a Shadow Victory Bell. The opponent swaps into a Marowak, and we probably should swap into Fero, but we swap into our Heliolisk here. They go for Shadow Bone, which is not the play, but they get the Defense Drop, which actually might be very beneficial for this opponent. We go for a Thunderbolt, grabbing a shield. We make it to a Thunderbolt number two, and this will be doing big damage or grabbing the final shield from the opponent, but they will be able to fully farm us down. Luckily, we do have Fero though so we can go in and pretty safely no shield anything here they're actually running flame wheel so what am I talking about what do I know <laughs> flame wheel not a, not a movie see ever really but flame wheel does quite a lot of damage to the Fero and they come back in with the victory bell gonna go straight for the drill pack here with the Fero taking out the victory bell and they have got a talon flame in the back fire up against grass but we're running sludge bomb how much damage will it do to the talon flame it nearly one shots them and we get the farm down and take that game into the next game, we've got Torterra, and of course we're seeing a Thunderfang Shadow Steelix. So a very good matchup for Torterra. The opponent say swaps into a Victory Bell, and look at the Razor Leaf damage. Honestly, they're nearly doing as much damage as these Incinerates here. And honestly, what the hell? We are so low. How has that happened? The opponent's going to come in with a Noctowl. We go for the Flame Charge. And they do farm us down with the Wing Attack, but we can come in with our Eevee and this... I, well, I guess we're going to be able to tank a charge roof here. Sky Attack doesn't do an awful lot of damage. Eevee seems to be fairly bulky. Going to go for a Body Sam, and that will grab a shield from the opponent. Okay. We're going to come in with the Tor Terra, and I think the play is to just fully Razor Leaf farm them down and hope the opponent does not expect a Stone Edge. So we're going to let the second charge roof go through. Just another Psychic Fangs, and it doesn't really make a difference because Thunder Fangs still doing absolutely nothing. Going to full send this Stone Edge. 
but the opponent does shield it up. They get the farm down. That's not ideal for us. We have to make it to back to back body slams in time. It's going to be incredibly close here. We go for the first one. And can we get to the second body slam? Yes, we can. We actually lose CMP, but it doesn't matter. We have the move loaded. We did click on it. We can go for the body slam. And even though they were at to back to back moves there, we go for body slam, taking out the Noctowl, and we take that game. So going into the next battle, we are leading with a Forer into a Noctowl once again. So whilst you're seeing a lot of variety with our teams, a lot of the opponent's teams are very similar. They go for a Sky Attack. We're going to build all the way up to the Hyper Beam. Can we connect it right off the bat? Yes, we can. It nearly one-shots them. We get the Quick Attack Farm down. And the opponent is going to be coming in with a Unovan Stunfisk. Now we're going to stay in here. Go for a Brick Break just as they're getting to a charge move. Brick Break does connect and it's a CMP tie as well. So we're going to let the Furret go down. Very nice play here. The opponent does undercharge it though. And unfortunately, we don't get off a second Brick Break, although I don't think it really matters. They're going to go straight for a Mud Bomb into our Marsh Stomp. The opponent swaps into a Shift Tree. We're going to swap, catch the move onto our Shadow Nido King. And I think I've just seen we're running Fury Cutter. So we're doing absolutely massive damage with the fast moves, even though Fury Cutter isn't the strongest move because it is double super effective. Up against the Shift Tree, we get the farm down as well. We come out with the Earth Power loaded. This will grab the final shield from the opponent. And now we just need to make it two back-to-back -back surfs. And we're going to go for the surf here. And this should be grabbing a shield from the opponent. All shields are now down. We are now going to shield this up. I think we might even commit to the return here. It might do even more damage than a surf. And return from this range. We'll take out the Unovan Stunfisk. And we take that game. And now going into the final battle, we've got a Quilladin in the lead up against a Vigoroth. So Vigoroth can spam Body Sam, but we can actually spam it slightly faster with the combination of Vine Whip as the fast move. And here they're going to go for the Body Sam. We are going to go for a Body Sam, but they catch it onto Decidueye. An incredibly good catch there as it is double resisted. We're going to bank a ton of energy before eventually swapping into our Rufflet. And now we do completely wall it, although of course they could go for a Brave Bird here. The opponent does Let's go for the Brave Bird, but now that gives us a very comfortable farm down. We come out with a lot of energy loaded. Gonna go for a Rock Tomb Bait here into the Vigoroth. That does come back in, grabbing a shield, and now we should be able to tank a move and make it to another charge move in time. But we're actually going to use a shield here, and the opponent swaps into Makargo, so we can go for Rock Tomb number two. This should grab the final shield from the opponent, and it does, so now we can swap into our Lopani here. And the opponent going to go for the charge move pretty much straight away. They go for the overheat, but it is debuffed now. And now we should be able to make it to the hyper beam in time. And this is resisted, but hyper beam still does huge damage before they do make it to a final charge move to take out the Lopany. But they actually undercharge it, so smart play from the opponent. But they're so low now that we can come in with our Rufflet here. We don't quite make it to the charge roof in time. That's really unfortunate. Body Slam takes us out. But we've got so much loaded energy. We go straight for the energy ball. Energy ball takes out the Vigoroth. And we've got a Body Slam loaded as well. This will be enough to take out the Makargo. And we take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And as for my answer, I really enjoyed the Spring Cup. I just thought there were so many incredible teams that I was able to showcase on my channel during that week. So that's my favorite. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.